Hey guys, what is up? Alan here and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we're going to be checking out round two of the Driftmasters Virtual Championship. Uh, this event for us actually went down pretty well. However, um, yeah, we had some rumbles along the way that we had to overcome, but it was certainly a fun one to be a part of. First off, we're going to check out the track layout, um, which I think was an easy layout, but it was quite difficult. I don't really think the live stream showed the difficulty of the track. Um, of course, we had an extra two weeks due to the fact that there was a postponement of the of the round two event. We had qualifying two weeks before, so we had more time to prepare for the event. Um, but it, it just it just did not look the easiest. Uh, it just wasn't the easiest as a driver, really. Um, from the spectator point of view, it probably looked quite simple. It was just three corners, right? Uh, but it was very, very difficult. So uh, before I start these uh, runs, just to mention, uh, or just a disclaimer, uh, this footage is not my own. Uh, I want to thank the guys for recording this live stream crew. Um, hopefully they're okay with me using it. But essentially, I, I didn't save any replays. Uh, VDC very kindly give us the replays of our run, so it's very easy for me to make these videos. But this event, I had to actually go onto the live stream and record them. So this is our qualifying run. This is our second qualifying run. And uh, this one actually worked out really well. Uh, the first one, we got an 88. I do believe, I'll correct myself if I'm wrong. And I think this one got us a 96.5. Again, guys, this was like two or three weeks ago. So again, initiating in nicely into the inner climb point one, transition up towards uh, three, out onto the curb, like I had mentioned, into four, super nice and early. Look at this transition here in the middle of the track. And we're gonna power all the way through the inner climb point in second gear here, up to third again. Uh, out to the other zone of uh, seven into eight. We fill it pretty well there actually and into nine on the cross line again Not a really, you know a difficult looking track load. It's not really that difficult from the outside But driving it. It's super tricky uh, Like I said the point that you initiate that sets you up for almost clipping point five It's crazy to think but the point that you initiate at or clipping point one can actually determine how you get through clipping point five so you're literally before you even initiated you're almost thinking about how you're going to finish off the lap uh one of those tricky track loads um for tandem i think interior worked out it worked out great and i think the driver level worked out great but i think we'll show some kind of weaknesses and pros of this track load uh, from these replay cams we're going to show so due to our first place qualifying run we end up getting a buy run in the top 32 i would not be showing a buy run in this video it's kind of pointless it was pretty much i wouldn't say the same as our, our first place qualifying run uh, but it was kind of the same mentality just do a really decent lead run so we're just going to move straight on into our top 16 battle versus Heike Kovanen um Heike part of MS uh, or, or Mr. Shiftu, who's, which is an old team now, I believe they've kind of disbanded uh, of Miyamoto, uh, Twitch streamer. So, um, yeah, battling him, I know that those group of guys are very great, they're very good drivers. So, I obviously, I have to make sure to stay on point. So, here leading in, we're using the replay cams for this because I, the track cameras, I didn't really like them. These uh, drone cameras were much better. Um, pretty decent here on inner clipping point one, out to the other zone, carrying decent amount of angle. Heike is right there with us into clipping point four, but he's not really. You know, he's not really stuck with us. Uh, he's not really on our door. He puts a wheel on the inner curb there. We do as well a tiny bit, um, but he's not really able to close the gap. Uh, he's missing a few zones as the chase driver, and he really closes up across the line, but it's a little bit too late by that point. So uh, yeah, we definitely had an advantage after that. So we switch it back around. This time we're chasing in. Heike does a nice uh, line all the way. Puts a wheel on the inner curb there. Not allowed to do that. The judges asked us not to do that. Uh, I'm here uh, mimicking. Uh, what Heike wa uh, was doing so uh, yeah transition here into the final uh, transition or the second last transition he puts a wheel on the inner curb again to ask the lead driver not to do that uh, chase driver is, is okay and we do a nice transition here ac again across the line he runs a bit wide we get into the inner clipping point nothing um, not really a, a crazy battle I suppose it was fairly it was down to more of mistakes lead run we were I think we were uh, the same, if not maybe on our side a little bit better in the lead run, and then the chase. I think we were definitely much better, so we up, we end up getting the win for that. I'm moving on into the top eight. So for our next battle, we had Sam Sheffield for our top eight battle. Sam is uh, a VDC driver, um, and I believe he's a crewmate as well for Martin Richards, who's a Drift Masters driver as well. So uh, yeah, heading into this battle, I battled Sam quite a few times before. We've had our uh, controversies in VDC um, mostly due to my, my fault but we're not talking about that guys okay we're not gonna mention about that but uh, we're just gonna zoom over that I'm just gonna go zooming straight into the battle we flick in with a massive flick and uh, again Sam not really able to stay with us on the initiation our car is super quick in a straight line guys I'm not really sure why it's so fast 
uh, as Sam gives us a little tap on the front wheel. He gives us another tap here on the transition. Yep, you can see our car jolt forward, uh, but he's doing a pretty decent chase considering that the lack of proximity he had on initiation. And throughout the course, he's not really able to apply the fight. That's the thing with this track though. That's why I wasn't really so much a fan of this track, was simply because if you weren't on the door from the start, you had no hope of being able to catch up. So uh, I had that in my mind. I wanted to make sure I was on people's doors from the start, just like what I'm doing here with Sam, making sure I'm on the door from the get-go so that I can then pace myself throughout the run, how close do I want to get? Do I want to back off now? Do I want to get closer now? Um, you know, if you leave it too much on the table, on initiation point as a, uh, as a chase driver, you, this track layout, you can never catch up. And that's one of the faults of this track layout, which I'm not really a fan of. Uh, as you can see, the rest of our chase run there was pretty sweet. So, um, yeah, we end up getting the win for this one. Uh, yeah, pretty, I think it's fairly self-explanatory. Wasn't really that difficult in the end in terms of uh, what we had to do in the chase position. Sam really couldn't apply the fight. It was kind of lost on, uh, on the lead runs in reality. So, um, yeah, moving on into the top four. So for our top four battle, we end up uh, going against uh, Serban Matai from Romania. Uh, Serban, a good friend of mine, I've uh, talked to him quite a few times. Uh, he's here in the Mark IV or the Drispec Mark IV Supra, which all of the Drispec guys now use, Mark IV Supra. I think this car is slept on by a lot of people. Um, this Mark IV Supra, the BMW 46 and the BMW E36, for some reason, uh, within the whole ver uh, top level drifting of you know using VDC cars and stuff like that everyone leaves the Supra the BMWs and goes straight to the S chassis um, I don't know why people do it we left the Z because of sponsorship reasons partnership reasons we we were asked to go back into the S15 which we did um, and you know everyone kind of followed everyone saw the Tikan one with the S chassis we won with the S chassis before and everyone joined this chassis train but I do believe it's not the best car. I do believe with a bit of work, you can get the Supra, you can get the BMWs to work much better than the S chassis. But for some reason, people don't really want to put the time into it. And so they just hop on the band bandwagon and uh, yeah, yeah, just, just hop on with the S chassis, which I'm not complaining. I mean, they're quite a cool car, right? So anyway, heading into this battle, uh, we're doing a decent lead run. That's our aim here. And uh, Serban's going to dive straight onto the door. Does a, a shallow dive onto our door. Gives a little tap on the rear quarter. Doesn't affect us. Has, to, has a wobble on angle kind of everywhere. Uh, we're doing a pretty decent lead run here up in front. Nice transition. Shallow again on the transition goes Serban. Um, and then up into clipping point six, he kind of fixes up his his, his strut and, and really gets on us for the remainder of the layout. We kind of a bit shallow in the lead position there across the line. Um, yeah, pretty decent um, lead run by us. I feel like Serban's chase could be a bit much better. So trying to maximize that Serban again shallow on the inner clipping point we try to mimic him as best as possible now this is what i'm on about by mimicking again servant shallow on the inner clipping point um transitioning through um gets much better on this inner clipping point like uh, you know when i'm looking at this here uh, i see that we're much closer in proximity i see that servants make mistakes in in the parts of the track load that we never made mistakes and um and so i felt i uh, looking back on this like i kind of feel like we probably should have gotten the win for that i mean fair fairly harsh i feel like that it's not not potentially um kind of get it i mean you know serban was shallow on the transition he had much more mistakes in the chase position uh, i can't really see his lead run being that much better than us i mean he was shallow on the clipping, clipping points uh, you know distance wise so um yeah you know I, I suppose one more time is fair enough uh but man i i mean it's kind of hard to pull um you know I don't know. I just feel, I feel like we could have gotten the win for that one, honestly. But look, we'll accept it one more time. We'll we'll just try and do it better again in the chase, in the one more time battle. And so here we go. Going in for the initiation point. Again, we do the same initiation point again. Uh, Serban, a bit better on angle this time, but still shallow on line. And uh, out towards the curb. We put a wheel onto the curb. That should be allowed. We were allowed to do that in qualifying. Therefore, we should be allowed to do it in battles. So I don't feel like that was a, a disastrous point for us. Serban doing a much better... Uh, job in the chase position this time around out towards the other zone we do a little bit better in the lead position as well in general we drop a wheel into the dirt there we would get nicely into the last inner clipping point um i don't really know was that dirt drop kind of the, the loss for us i suppose uh we want to spoil it for you guys but i think we do a better job here in the initiation point we match his angle a little bit shallow on a line but look at us we're right there with him we're pushing him almost um and i feel like we're taking much more risk in the in the chase position here uh, transition back across into the inner clipping point here of five. Uh, I have a weird wobble um, and again another weird straighten there so I don't know was that enough 
um, for it to warrant it one more time. I, I mean, like, dude, it's super close. You're literally picking out the mistakes or, or the minority of mistakes in all of this. And you know what, man? I, it's very, very difficult to, to, to decipher this particular battle. Um, you know, so I don't, I, I don't, uh, I don't feel like the judges had it easy for this one for sure. Um, I do believe the first battle, I do think we probably should have clinched that. I don't really see anything hugely wrong that we did. Um, but this one more time battle, I feel like I think could have gone either way. And I think, it, you know, it going for Serban for the win, I think was fair enough. Um, so, yeah, I think it was one of those events or one of those runs that I just didn't pull it together when I needed to and because of that we end up getting knocked out and I uh, had to fight for third and fourth place playoff. So for the third fourth playoff we had our good buddy Victor Alves from Brazil. Now you might remember from the last uh, review video that we did which was VDC uh, round five we had Victor Alves in the top eight and Victor ended up getting the win after we made a massive mistake in the chase position. Now I was not going to make a mistake this time around that was not my plan. My plan was to beat Victor this time and make it a uh, another win for us so initiating in uh, Victor gives us a good few taps on the front wheel um, obviously not what he wanted to do I, I bet uh, we try to correct ourselves as best as possible we get into the inner clip point fine he transitions gives us another tap in the transition at this point I'm thinking in my head right just got to keep it clean just finish off the run I mean that contact is a little bit too much it's fine to touch doors push people around the place uh, but he literally pushed me off the track nearly two wheels off over the curb on clip three so initiating in I'm not sure I take too many risks, um, but Victor does strain up an angle and gets away from us. You know, that's not, that's not my fault. You know, he made a mistake. That's how he got away from us. But we catch back up again. Um, he cuts us off a little bit on the transition, going very close to the grass on the right. We kind of avoid that. We give him a good tap on the door. That was a reminder for what he did to us the first time around. It wasn't really. That was a mistake by me. But other than that, you know, it was a finish across the line, pretty decent battle otherwise. Things fairly self-explanatory. We got the win from that. The contact from Victor in the chase position was kind of the, the kind of full stop in that it was the end statement uh, for Victor and his, uh, his last place point on the podium. So we end up getting the third place uh, step on the podium. And uh, yeah, it was a pretty awesome uh, set of battles for us. Obviously, we would have liked to get into the finals and battle my teammate, Reese Tatterson, who, by the way, guys, ended up taking the win, winning it for Project Academy for round two. So uh, Project Academy, this time, round two, podium, first and third place. And uh, actually, our second win as well. Uh, two wins out of two for Driftmasters so far. So that's pretty, pretty awesome indeed. So yeah, guys, that's gonna end it for this video, of course. Uh, make sure to check out this coming Saturday as well, Virtual Championship Round 6 at Okayama. We also have Driftmasters again in, uh, well I suppose in over a week's time on next Saturday as well for Round 3. Uh, should be an awesome set of weekends. Uh, we're nearing the end of the VDC season and the DMVC season, so we're going to have to find some sort of competitions or maybe some other stuff to do in the coming months and we uh, coming months and well, weeks and months, I should say. So um, yeah, it should be a lot to plan for that, and hopefully we can do a lot more as well with you guys on the stream. And stuff. So stay tuned for all of that. But for now, thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we'll talk to you guys very, very soon. Cheers and goodbye.